Yo, it's prime time. I'm feeling gross. I kind of can't believe we fixed the whole number. I'm Andy and this is Kirsten. Roughly a year ago, we purchased Magic Dragon and began a refit. She was almost ready to go back in the water when Hurricane Ian hit. And now we have some more work to do. Last time we started the fiberglass repair work and this time we will finish that job. So it's now a few days after we finished kind of the structural fiberglass repairs. So what we have to do now is all the finishing work. And um, we have our two part fairing compound. And here we have, um, Sorry, I'm not gonna be able to get that out, but this is a protective barrier coat primer. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna sand the surface. We're going to put the fairing compound, get it into the right shape and prime it. And hopefully by the end of this video, we will have it fared and primed and ready for bottom paint. And then that just means we're one step closer to getting back in the water. For now, let's get back to work. Safety first. The blades are out. Now we're good. So I think, I think we might be done sanding. <clears throat> Pulled out, there was kind of a ridge here, high point. Pulled that out, got rid of all the blush basically. If it was still shiny, you wouldn't want to start fairing it. Knocked these guys back, got all of the epoxy that I had hung over onto the current bottom paint off. So we should be good to go there, I think. I think it's time to start uh, cleaning it, getting it ready for the two parts. Sorry about the noise. It's obviously an active boatyard. Only so much I can do about that, but we are now ready to start fairing the little holes. Uh, two part fairing compound, one to one. One's green, one is, or one's blue, one's yellow. Mix them together till they get green. Apply, wait three hours, and this temperature is what the manufacturer says, and then sand. So, that's what we're gonna do. Let's get started. Looks pretty green to me. Yo, it has been about an hour since we put this fairing compound up. This stuff has like kind of an optimal working time when it comes to sanding everything. So uh, we wanted to get that starting to set up before we start applying here. So when it comes time for finishing, you know, sanding, all that sort of stuff, we can do that before uh, we really have to start doing it over here. So back to mixing and then applying. So it has now been three hours after the first things that we put on, and it is time to start sanding them. We have this, it's called a long board. This is a very cheap one, but it's flexible. So you can put sandpaper on here, and then uh, you can sand with the curve of the hull. Whereas if you just had like a hard sander, you'd be sanding grooves in. So we're gonna some sandpaper on and get to it. 
first time we've ever done this. So we're gonna start with not the coarsest grit we have. This is 120. We need to take it off faster and go to something a little bit rougher. So the videos I watched online said, you don't wanna just go back and forth in the same spot because you'll continue to groove. So like a stroke this way, and a stroke in a different direction, and so on. Sun is starting to go down. I don't know if you can tell that it's starting to get darker. Kirsten went back to the Airbnb to take care of our dogs. And now it's been three hours on this fairing compound. So I'm gonna start smoothing this out. I'm gonna take it down with the hand sander um, because I think we we're gonna need, I think we're gonna need at least one more layer to get uh, all of the ripples out. So we'll start with the hand sander We'll do another layer tomorrow. Let's get working. Getting there looks pretty good the curve is really in there's just a couple low spots as i was standing it started to realize that while the top was firm underneath it was still a little pliable probably because it was thicker over here than these little three but uh yeah i mean she's starting she's starting to come together for sure so um hopefully one more layer letting it set and then sanding uh the curve into it and uh this will be knocked out so we're gonna go to the airbnb have some food Get a good night's rest and get started again tomorrow. We'll see you then. It's the next morning. The first layer of fairing compound has had all night to set up. Looks pretty good overall. Here it is. These little ones look fantastic. The big one, I made a couple mistakes. You can see here, apparently I didn't get it mixed all the way great because that is just that stuff right there. That's the hardener. So in a couple of these spots, apparently I didn't get the hardener mixed in well enough with the uh, epoxy fairing compound resin, and so it didn't activate. So I'm gonna have to pull, I'm gonna have to pull these wet spots out, <clears throat> um, and we're just gonna have to fill them back in. So part of doing this yourself, doing it for the first time, make mistakes, learn as you go. So. Let's get pulling those out, and we'll prep the surface, and we'll get mixing and laying the new stuff. So, I think we got all of the soft spots where it didn't cure because I didn't mix it very well. Um, so now we're ready to prep the surface, mix some more up, and start laying it down. So we'll let this thin coat set up and dry. We need at least three hours. Maybe we'll let it go four, and then we'll sand it all down, and then we'll come back with like one coat here, one coat here, and hopefully we'll have everything out to the level uh, in three coats. If we need to, we will do a fourth, no big deal. Uh, we got the time, we got the materials. So it's looking really good though. We've knocked it down as far as we're gonna knock it down for today. Feels really good. Uh, good boatyard friend is what I would call him now. Dave 
he went and got like a flexible drywall scraper because we can bend it to the contour of the boat and see if, how much of a gap there is between um, you know the blade between the blade and the hulls. So overall, it's looking really good. We're really pleased with it. Uh, we just have a couple more valleys to fill, but they're just ever so thin. And it's gonna be time to give it one last finishing sanding, prime it, and move on. So it is the next morning. Our fairing project continues. It's starting to look really good. A couple of kind of valleys right here in the part that has been roughed up yet. So that's what we'll be focusing on today. And we'll do a, a slight layer up here to even some of this out. But step one, get a sander out, rough up and just kind of even out some of these like ledges. So that way the new layer can adhere pretty well, but going pretty good. I mean, up here, it looks, looks really good. So let's do the work. So one of the things that's been a lot of fun being kind of here in the boatyard is everyone is like clearly on the same page trying to recover from this. And so everyone's really friendly. So we just got done talking to Tyler and Tyler, I'll let Kirsten explain. He brought us some sailing books where they mention uh, our boats, the Gulf Star 50. So this is Sailing a Serious Ocean by John Crutchmer. And apparently he delivered a Gulf Star 50 catch from Fort Lauderdale to Japan. And he said he came to appreciate it as a capable and comfortable blue water boat. Some of the boats are approaching 40 years old, like ours, uh, and yet there's been a renaissance in the reputation. There are still some bargains out there that will need complete refits but a nice 50 will cost as much to buy today as it did 20 years ago. It's a lot of blue water boat for the bang. Always good. I've never met John. Hopefully someday, John, if you're watching this, love to meet you sometime, but we're big fans. And so anytime that like Kretschmer says something good about the boat you've bought, like it, it's good to hear. But anyway, it's time to get back to our fairing work. So we're taking a lunch break and like really, really, really mature adults, we have Lunchables. I have the best Lunchables, the pepperoni pizza. And Kirsten just asked me if she thought I could put the whole, like eat one of them at a time. I'll let her explain the rules. I asked him if he thought he could eat a whole pizza in one bite, but he has to keep his mouth closed the whole time. Take a little pepperoni. A little marinara. We're cutting this. A little bit of cheese. <clears throat> also, don't choke, because I'm not doing the Heimlich for you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you opened your mouth. <laughs> You're opening your mouth. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> Gross. She says I lose, because I open my mouth like this much. <clears throat> and then I talked with my mouth. Leave it, leave a comment in the comment no, section below. Did I win or lose that one? Don't leave a comment. Did I win or lose? Am I right or is Kirsten right? Good morning. We're back at the boat. I'm back at the boat. Kirsten is taking care of um, some life stuff back at the Airbnb. Today's gonna be a very short boat work day. One. We've been at the boat a lot and just tired. I think we're both just tired. We need some time off, a day off. So just came out to sand and do a new layer of the compound. We're hoping it's the last layer. So other than some final sanding and smoothing, I think this is I think this is gonna be good. There's a couple of professionals here in the yard 
they've taken a look at at the work and have kind of approved, which, you know, I want to take a quick moment to kind of talk about that topic. So obviously, yeah, like our boat fell over in the hurricane, that can damage a boat. Um, we are not professionals nor experts in shipbuilding. So, you know, how can we be comfortable or confident putting the boat back in the water? I guess kind of where we're at is, you know, in the prior video where I came down by myself, I had a lot of contractors on the boat. Most of them didn't want to be on camera, so we respected their issues. So I showed you myself looking at the bulkheads, myself looking at various parts of the boat. Professionals also came and looked. You know, I had fiberglass, shipwrights, riggers. I had a whole bunch. I could, I could list several more. They all believe that the boat is repairable. <clears throat> Some stuff will be done off camera by professionals. This up here in the side of the hall, that was done by us. We will be honest about all that. So that's why we kind of feel comfortable. Sorry for this little bit of a diatribe, but we, you know, I just wanted to address that topic. Um, but anyways, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Right now, just gotta put all this stuff up. Um, but we'll be back tomorrow to hopefully uh, do the final finishing work on the hole in our hall. It's it's exciting. Real excited about that. Um, we'll see you in the morning. My bucket stool. While Kirsten is tackling some little jobs, we are back at it on this beautiful foggy and cloudy day. We think we have the last layer of fairing compound already on here. So now it's just sanding it to a great smooth finish. The little spots, the little spots like here where I accidentally put it over the bottom paint, we're gonna knock that down with the hand sander, the electric random orbital, orbital? I have a hard time saying that, sander. Um, and then we're gonna come back with a long board to really get it smoothed out. Okay, that is, let's take all of it off. <laughs> I think that is it. Look at this. Look at how perfectly smooth it is. Feels great. Down the side of the boat. Curvature is all there. I feel pretty good about that. Y'all, it's prime time. I've been waiting all day to say that. Anyway, uh, it's time to start priming our ferret out spot on the hull. We have two part uh, epoxy primer and a barrier coat that we are gonna be used staying in the Total Boat system. We are not sponsored, but figured it just made sense to use the same products together. First, we have the surface prep, and then this is a three to one mixture, so then we will mix it, and then we'll apply it. it takes probably about four coats. We're only doing one today. Um, just want to see how it applies. So let's get moving. I kind of can't believe we fixed the hole in our boat. Like, I don't know. I can't believe we did it. I couldn't believe it either. We had successfully fixed a big part of our boat. A mere three additional coats of primer was all that remained between us and the job very well done. So, four coats of epoxy, barrier coat, and primer. We think this project's done. I think this project is wrapped up for where we're taking it now. Obviously, we still gotta do the ablative bottom paint, but we have other places to touch up. So that'll be a future video, a future project when we touch up the bottom paint everywhere. Just to recap, you know, when we got back to the boat, there was a eight to 10 inch crack in the hall. Kirsten did a fantastic job grinding that out, pulling back the taper. 
And then we also laid 10 layers of fiberglass externally, two layers of backing on the inside where it went all the way through the hall. And that was kind of the end of part one. Part two, we picked it up, we fared it out, got the contour of the hall correct, and we primed it. So mission accomplished. All that's left is we're gonna go inside, we're gonna talk about things we wish we knew before we started this project. Let's go in. So we are inside and inside ended up being at Kirsten's parents' house. It's Christmas Eve. So let's talk about some of the major lessons that we learned or wish we would have known before we tackled the fiberglass project. And lesson number one is when in doubt, just keep grinding it out. Yeah, so what we basically did is spend two, pretty much three days grinding the fiberglass. Had to do it again, we would just keep grinding. If there was any doubt about where we should stop, we would just keep going a little bit more, make sure we got all of the delaminated glass taken care of and just keep grinding in one day. To go along with that, we would have ground out a more uniform shape. That would have made it easier to cut out uniform shapes of the fiberglass. We wouldn't have had to create crazy patterns every time. Probably would have saved us a bit of time throughout the whole process. The second thing that we definitely learned or would want other people to know about this sort of project is it doesn't really matter what epoxy system you use. So kind of the industry standard is the West system and I'm sure it's great, but we use Total Boat and there are other manufacturers on the market. In talking to professionals in the yard, other people have done it themselves and our own experience, like Total Boat was just as good as using any other system. And so don't waste a lot of mental energy or time trying to figure out what exact product to use. They're all probably pretty good. The other thing that goes along with that is that a little bit of epoxy goes a long way. Early on, we were definitely mixing a lot more than what needed to be, which meant that we had a lot left over in the cups afterwards. We still had enough to finish the project, but we definitely could have saved more than what we were doing. So third, what is something you think that we did really well this project? Creating the patterns out of the parchment paper. So because we had a weird shape, in the hole, uh, we used parchment paper to create a pattern so that we could copy that onto the fiberglass and make sure that we were cutting the fiberglass to the exact shape that we needed. It allowed us to create the fiberglass layers in the one inch margin that we needed to be sure that it would adhere to the hole in the right way what was the most unexpected part for you? For me, it was the fact that the lighter glass, the four ounce glass was actually much harder to work with than the 1708, the thicker glass. The 1708 kind of held its structure a lot better. The four ounce was very easy to kind of stretch and pull in the wrong directions, which definitely led to some frustrations. And I was pretty surprised by that. What was the worst part of the project? Probably the itchiness from the fiberglass dust, but I mean, all told, it wasn't that bad of a project. It was a little dirty, a little dusty, but all in all, not too bad. My favorite question, how much money did we save? That's the big one, right? It's what everyone wants to know. So for the spots that we fixed in this project or these two videos, we were quoted between three and $5,000 by a couple different contractors. All told, we spent about six or $700 on supplies and quite a few days. I will say the days were never like completely full days for us. So it was, you know, four or five hours, one day, two hours, the next day. We probably could add it up and see what our total time is or was, we haven't done that. The other thing I'll say about it is we could have saved even more money because I, I bought 10 yards of 1708, 10 yards by 50 inches. And I had no concept like how much fiberglass that was. We probably could have easily bought like a third or half of that. And same thing with the epoxy. I bought the big like one gallon kit um, and, and we're not even halfway through that right now. <laughs> so we could have saved even more money, but as it is, we saved anywhere from like $2,300 to like $4,300 doing this project ourselves. 
What would you tell someone considering a project like this? I would tell them that you can do it, but before you do it, just do your research. There are incredible resources out there. Um, the West System has like a 156 page document that walks you through all of it. Total Boat has a very long document. The information's out there and you can do it. The other thing I would say is it pays to kind of, or saves, to be friendly and to network with people. So one of the things that was great help for us is we had experienced DIY people, we had professionals, we had a whole range of fiberglass um, experience that was willing to kind of walk us through it. And we found the boating community to be like that in general. So get out there, be friendly, talk to people, and they will help you through this type of project. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Would you do it again, mate? <laughs> that was my mother-in-law, and absolutely, I would do it again. It was a fantastic learning experience. I agree. I was a little bit nervous about this project, to be honest, uh, but I tried to put my trust in Andy. He was very confident we could get it done, and sure enough, he was right. The one caveat I will say is that you need to kind of have an understanding of what you think your own limitations are going to be, there is one part of the hall work that we are gonna have a professional, a professional come in and do, and that's where the hall meets the keel. There's a little spot that needs cleaned up, um, and we didn't feel comfortable like fairing that out ourselves, but the side of the boat, 100%, I would do that again. We fixed the hole in our boat.